Welcome to the Climate Talks conversation, a collaboration between the German Embassy in Ghana and the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. We are looking at waste to energy. And come with me, let's find out exactly what's happening here. Welcome to Safizana, Ghana Limited, 14 kilometers away from Tema, 25 kilometers away from Accra, in an area of the greater Accra region called Ajay Kojo. I'm here to talk about waste to resource, and the general manager is here to educate you. His name is Elik Blim Ashilevi. Hello, sir. Hi, Kafui. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Nice to have you here. Give us a little background about Safizana. When did everything start here? So Safizana came into a Shaiman municipality mm -hmm. 10 years ago when the circular economy discussion was gaining traction. Mm -hmm. We came to augment the efforts of government in reducing waste in municipalities and reducing sanitation-related diseases within every community we want to operate. Awesome. We started off as a compost, composting plant that turned organic waste and fecal sludge into biofertilizers. Okay, where was the organic waste coming from? So, organic waste came from markets, food, food selling markets, and food processing industries within the enclave. Okay. How about the fecal sludge? Where did that come from? The fecal sludge also comes from the community. Okay. We have one here that is patronized by the community. Okay. We have others scattered within the community. Okay. We collect it and co-mingle it with the organic waste from both markets and industry to produce the resources we are about to introduce you to. Okay. So, waste to resource. What is the waste? What is the resource? Fantastic. We'll get there. Just break down some things for me. So, mm. when you say market waste, what is it? The waste of what? Wait, 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 wait. So, market waste mm. represents residues from food sales, vegetable sales, okay. and fruit sales. I see. Yeah. Okay. So, those that are not sold and that become very unwholesome okay. are brought here for valorization. And then the fecal sludge? The fecal sludge comes from the community. That's poop. Poop. Okay. Toilets. We produce it. We beings. produce it. Okay, all right. Okay. We produce it. Awesome. We okay. combine them at predetermined posh, uh, ratios to achieve certain results based on analysis on their biomethane potential, their dry matter, Okay. And also the volatile content. Awesome. Yes. This tells you how resourceful, how or how valuable the waste may be to us. I'm just curious before yeah. we start the process. Yeah. Does Safizana mean anything? What does it mean? Safizana means all is well. What language is this? This is Swahili. Kiswahili. Safizana. All is, all well. is well. Let's go and check out Good. The, the beginning of the process of turning sure. waste to resource. So where are we going now? So we are going to the waste reception area. Okay, so all that okay. market waste, the fecal sludge comes here. So the fecal sludge uh -huh. and the industrial waste comes here. Okay. And the market waste goes to the latter end of the production process. Okay. Okay. It is, pro it is programmed in a way that certain portions of the resources are derived earlier because the waste has an expiry period. Okay. The more you keep it, the more you exhaust the resource potential. Mm -hmm. So the gas potential is utilized first, after which the mixture, called the digestate, mm -hmm. is repurposed into biofertilizers. Mm -hmm. So here we get only the industrial waste. Industrial waste relates to production residues from mm -hmm. food processing companies like we do with Nestle, we have Promacidor, we have nutri foods. We have um, yeah, okay. Go ahead. we have Guinness Ghana Limited mm -hmm. bringing their waste residues from production. Talking of uh, waste coming in, this is what is this? What, what do we see here? Is this some waste coming in? Yes, this is waste coming from industry. Okay. Nestle Ghana Limited. Okay. So Nestle produces milk. They produce uh, uh, cereal. And those waste that they generate in the production process are brought here and valorized. For them, 
they are what disposing their waste sustainably. You know what? I'm curious. What, what's happening there? It drives onto the. Can we yes. just qu quickly see? Since we're here and it's happened, the timing is good. So that the truck has come in. What is it driving on? So the first point of call for the waste camps is for us to determine the tonnage. Okay. All right. How much waste has been brought? Uh huh. Out of that, you are able to tell how much resource can be derived from it. Okay. You are even able to tell where it is coming from, the kind of waste that is in it, and where it should be stored. So this is a weigh bridge, correct? So this is a weighing bridge okay. that determines the tonnage of waste we received from the various streams. I want to see how heavy this waste is. Okay. Okay. So on average, every day, how much waste comes in here? On average, every day, including the faker sledge, yes. we receive about 50 tons of waste. Daily? Daily. That's a lot of waste. A lot of waste. 50 wow. tons of waste, daily. Mm. So, it has been recorded? The weight has been recorded? Yes, so, okay. what happens is that uh -huh. the initial weight is taken, uh -huh. it goes to dispose, or it goes to store the waste in the warehouse, All then right. comes to weigh the empty, then we, we get the net. Okay. The net of what was placed ah, under the shed. Simple subtraction. Simple subtraction. Okay. So what comes in, uh -huh. all right, is recorded. Okay. Then, after it's offloaded the waste, it comes to weigh the empty. I see. Okay. So the difference between the gross and the net gives you the value of waste we receive at the shed. Okay. All right. So now we can start. Yeah. What is this, by the way? Is this significant, or is just soil? So, this is not soil, this is a dried digestate. So, the liquid component of what was left after the gas potential was exhausted okay. was separated from the solid content. Mm. And the water goes into a waste treatment pond, all right? And this is further dried and co composted with market waste to produce the biofertilizers. So this is fertilizer? So this is the base for fertilizer. Oh, okay, so it will go undergo some more yes, processing? Yes, it will go under, under more processing. Okay. Let's, let's begin yeah, from there. Great, yeah. I just wanted side. to check, yeah. check out that whole process. So let's start. So your waste comes, your ficus sludge, correct? Yes. Okay. So the ficus sludge is equally its weight uh -huh. and mixed with the, uh, the organic waste from industry at very predetermined quantities. Why is that important? It is important because if you are preparing food, you prepare a recipe yes. based on the taste and weight uh -huh. and color you want to see. Right. Yes, it's the same way we mix the waste in terms of what we want to derive as resource okay. and in what quantities and right. at what qualities. Okay. And it is based on that that we determine what level of or what quantum of sledge should be mixed with the organic waste to be digested. This is sludge? So this is organic waste. Organic waste, okay. Yes. okay. What you see there is mix of dairy, mix of cerealic rice, okay. pressed together okay. to be fed with the fecal sludge. Uh -huh. okay, let's go. Let's so, go. so various industries are responsible for producing this waste? Yeah, they, they, they bring us this waste. Okay. Do you ask them to pack it like that? Or they just pack it and bring it to you, send it to you? So they, they, they pack it very well uh -huh. and bring it here. Okay. So it's, it's a very huge stock that has been depleted okay. to this level. All right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So... And this is the faker sledge reception area. Okay. The sieve you see here mm -hmm. separates the sledge from unwanted materials such as plastics, mm -hmm. bottles, mm -hmm. and all those predictable non-biodegradable materials that would impact the quality of our produces. They are separated through this sieving mechanism. Mm. Then the required substance are kept in the pits behind. Over there? Over there. Okay. You can see those round edges. Those are the pits mm -hmm. within which we store the fecal sledge. Over there? Yes. Mm. One, two. Mm. Okay. Yes. This is, this is... So this, this is what is unwanted. We don't need this. In the, we don't need this. Okay. So this goes to another waste treatment plant that have the competence of treating this unwanted material. Okay. So from this step, what's the next step? Okay. The next step mm -hmm. 
is to combine the ficus sludge mm -hmm. and the sorted organic waste mm -hmm. at certain predetermined ratios in the third pit. One, two, two three. three. Yes, the one that has the pump on it is where the mixture is done. The so mixing is done. So here is just the separation. The separation. Into these two. Yes. What's the capacity of these? These, this is, these are about 1,300 cubic meters. How deep is that? Well, if you use a deep stick, that should be... Actually about um, 2.5 meters. 2.5 meters. Yes. <laughs> that's, a, that's a depth. Yeah. Serious depth. Okay, you don't yeah. want to be playing around here and falling no, no, into no, that. No, no, no. So that's why we have guards here. Yes. Only those who are allowed to work here have access to it. I wonder how hot it will be inside there. It, 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 will be, it will be very, very hot, hot because it's, very, it's, it's covered. Okay. Yeah, it will be very hot. Okay. So it's covered. So when we want to mix, we transfer the fecal sledge into the other pit and add the determined quantities of industrial waste. Okay. All right. It is agitated to a, a character that makes it pumpable into the dome you see there. This dome? Yes. Okay. It has a containment that will receive the mixture. Okay? Yeah. And in the process of anaerobic digestion of the mixture, we generate biogas. So this is called an anaerobic digestion system. Okay. What it means is that the digestion is done in the absence of oxygen. If you were to add oxygen to the digestion, what would happen? It is, it is not possible because very close and you can introduce oxygen mm. into an anaerobic digestion process it's mm. to it's a mechanism to stabilize the waste okay are there any safety considerations to think about when this process is going on yes when you are pumping a mixture it comes with a certain pressure mm -hmm. the safest way to work to work is to expect that there could be an explosion on the line no matter how strong they are. So you cover yourself fully so that you don't get, your body doesn't get into contact with the mixture. What would happen if the, the mixture touches? They, they contain skin? pathogens, they contain mm. coliform, they contain all sorts of bacteria mm -hmm. that can cause infections. Okay. And that is the main reason why we are evacuating them from the community to reduce the incidence of sanitation related diseases. Otherwise, this would have been left in the community mm -hmm. and this industrial waste would have ended at the landfill emitting biomethane. And what are the consequences of that? The consequences of that is that our climate will be negatively impacted. Okay. So this is a good job you guys are doing. Very great. One. So uh, everything is mixed in that. How long is the process to take it from here and ending up in the dome? So. It's not so long. Mm -hmm. Once the materials are available, you just mix, agitate, and pump. And this can take an average of an hour. Okay. Now, when it gets into the, the dome, um, there's a process. I mean, I describe what happens with that process. So it is contained in a, in a sort of a, in a well. Mm -hmm. All right. And organisms feed on the waste in the absence of, of, of oxygen and generate biogas to occupy the balloon you see there. Mm -hmm. As you can see the balloon, its nature or its character now depicts something that is filled with content. And that is the biogas. Is it like inflatable, like, like a balloon? Does, does, it, does, so, does it become smaller? Yes, it becomes a bit deflated uh -huh. when the gas is less. How do you prevent this balloon from exploding? I mean, if I blow too much air in a balloon, it will pop. Yes. Uh, is this unpopable? So you, you only feed that which can generate the quantum, the dome, or the balloon can con contain. How do you know you've reached the capacity of that dome? So there are meters mm -hmm. on it that mm -hmm. determine the gas levels. OK. All right, and we know at which level be, uh, beyond which we cannot feed any, any longer. All right. When it gets there, we stop feeding and allow the CHPs, these are combined heat and power generators to convert the biogas into electricity and feed onto the grid. Okay. So the more they consume, the more haulage is created within the balloon for more biogas to be generated to occupy. 
These blue barrels I see here, what's the purpose of these blue barrels? So those barrels contain industrial waste that are sludgy in nature. Okay. We, we can see, or we, from there we can see to, to, tomato puree. Okay. That comes from nature food. Uh -huh. We can also have diary. That is also in there. Mm -hmm. So they contain sludgy industrial organic waste. The, would they have to come through here? Or they, 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 how do they get into the mix? So when it is their turn to be fed, oh, okay. they are brought to the feeding area, uh -huh. okay, measured and emptied into the mix pit. I hear you. From here, where do we go? How do we get the, the electricity generated? Okay. So when the gas is generated, uh -huh. these two equipments you see here are called combined heat and power generators. The orange and the yellow? Yes. Okay. They produce power and heat by sucking the, bio, the biogas from the dome, depend on the same biogas to power themselves and produce electricity from the rest and transport it onto the national grid. I see. The two have the capacity of 200 kilowatts per hour. These two? These two. Upcycling waste for good? Yes. This is purely waste to watts. So it's coming from here, going into here? Going to here. So the pipe you see there are the mediums through which the suction is done by the combined heat and power generators to produce power and heat. Can we go? Of course. All right. So describe what's going on here. So what's going on here is this machine you see here through this pipe it's converting the biogas, okay? It's transporting the biogas to be converted into heat and electricity. The electricity is then transported through lines buried down to the transformer you see there. Where's the transformer? Yes, there's a transformer there. There's a yes. now? So where the security post, you see those two poles? Yes. There is one here, there's the other one there. Uh -huh. Yes. So they receive the load. And that represents waste uh, electricity being fed onto the grid. How much electricity does this plant um, generate? So they have the capacity to generate 200 kilowatts per hour. Yes, 200 kilowatts per hour. In terms of providing power to a community, I mean, how much, how much of electricity can, can, can how many people can be served with 200 kilowatts of hour? If you, if you produce that on a daily basis, uh -huh. for one year, 3,000 people can benefit from it per annum. Okay. And this is based on uh, uh, the World Bank baseline right. on consumption per household. Okay. But so when you generate this, 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 uh, generate this electricity, do you, mm -hmm. do you send it to the grid or you use it here? We send it to the grid. Uh -huh. It's fed onto the grid. Okay. So you are contributing to yes. Ghana's electricity? Exactly. Um, exactly. And we are output. the only company in the energy mix that produces from waste. This is great. So is this a, a similar machine to this? Yes. Okay. They, they do the same thing. All right. This is the old one and this is the new one. Okay. Yeah. And so this is where the process ends? So this is where the electricity generation ends. Ends. Okay. I'm curious about this dough, though. What, what material is it made of? Because I'm afraid these birds can peck it. Can they peck it? <laughs> no, 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 no. They can't peck it. It, it has layers. Okay. Even if you peck, there are other layers that you have to perforate before you get in contact with the content. Okay. It's quite, a, it's quite a, an interesting operation you have here. Yes. I mean, the, just to think about the waste that we generate every day, and you are receiving 50 tons of waste every day, yes. and turning that into power, and feeding that to the, grill, the grid is quite admirable. Yes, it's, it's an innovation that should be replicated in all communities because they evaporate waste from the community, reducing the incidence of sanitation-related diseases and still give us a very useful resource, that is energy, power, electricity. 
What are some of the challenges? What are, the, what are your, your greatest challenges here in, in, in converting waste to resource? The, the mechanism is simple. The voltages are aligned between the receiver and the producer. So we are able to feed what we produce. Most of the time, it's either the, there is power outage or the grid is unstable. There is pressure on it so much so that it's unable to receive this. Mm -hmm. So whatever you produce would have gone waste. Oh, you can't store it? You can store it. Wow. And that, we've still been innovative with it. Yes. What do we want to do with the unused gas? That would have been converted into electricity. That is why we say we must give value to industry. We will compress this, clean it further, and send it to industry to power their boilers. The same food processing industry that brought the waste, they get compressed biomethane back to power their boilers and reduce their dependence on fossil, then closing the loop on the waste generation in their production process. So a real circular economy. A real circular economy. How do you uh, mitigate the levels of methane? Methane, how do you take methane out of the, of, of, of the, the stuff that is brought in here to be generated into, into energy? So we, we just eliminate the carbon dioxide and the, and the sulfur. Okay. Then we have very clean methane uh -huh. that can be used to power equipment. What are the safety considerations one must be aware of in a place like this? You don't smoke. Mm -hmm. You don't do anything that would have to bring sparkles. Mm -hmm. And you don't allow kids around here because... <laughs> you have deep Yes, you have deep, deep pits. pits. <laughs> we have waste mm -hmm. that, that can cause infections. Therefore, children are not allowed in the enclave. You are not allowed to smoke as well. Okay. No bush firing around. You don't burn bushes around. Yeah, it's, it's quite a volatile environment. Yes. Potentially. Yes, potentially. Okay. I'm looking at these white sacks there. It's, mm -hmm. it's, also, it's also waste? Yes, they contain waste. Okay. They contain the organic okay. waste. So those are not required in the churning process. Uh -huh. They are not organic in nature. They are not biodegradable and therefore are sent to companies that recycle plastic waste. Okay. Do you, what challenges do you face with separation of waste from the markets? Because I believe that everything comes together and then you have to separate, is that correct? Yes. So what we do is to train the market women and how to, on how to separate the waste and make it available for collection. When we come here to before they are introduced into the process, mm -hmm. we do another layer of se separation mm -hmm. to ensure that total unwanted materials are eliminated mm -hmm. from the process. Mm -hmm. We produce organic fertilizers that will not require certain materials that will compete for nutrients in the soil with the plants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those materials at, are eliminated and we make sure they don't end up in the finished product. You originally started out as a compost producer. Yes. You still do composting? Yes. Okay. So let's go to the wet end. Yes. So that's the wet end? That's the wet end. And this place is the dry end? It's the dry end. Uh, explain. <laughs> because I saw, I saw wet stuff here. So why is that wet and, and here is dry? So it all depends. It's it all relatable to the process. Okay. What comes out of the digester is very wet. Right. Okay, and that forms the basis for the compost production. Okay. Now, this is the process you were talking about yeah, earlier, right? The He's gone to dump, it. so yes. now they know how heavy it is. They know how heavy And they it know is. how much waste they brought. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Now, when the waste is mixed and fed, and the biomethane potential is exhausted, the digested is pumped out of the dome. When it is pumped out, it comes in both liquid and solid. Right. And we do separation so that the water goes into a waste treatment, a wastewater treatment pond. Is this it? No, the waste is at the back of okay. this, this facility. All right. All right. And the mechanism we use is the bell press. So it presses 
the content what we see here yes it the, squeezes the, 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 the solid out of the liquid mm -hmm. and it drops beneath it and that is used to form the base of the compost I see. and that is what we see there ah. yes and when this is not working we use a manual mechanism indeed yes so the, the digestate will be pumped onto these bags all right and the water sieved through a membrane okay and directed into the wastewater treatment plant. Excellent. So you're doing all, you're, you're producing, that's why it's waste to resource. It's waste to resource. Because the resources are, resources are many. You have, are, are different types. You have uh, electricity. Yes. And then you have fertilizer we as well. You have fertilizer as well. And awesome. We, and now we say we have biogas because we'll be bottling the biogas. Okay. And transport it for industrial use. What is happening here? So that is a form of market waste. Market waste? Yes. So those are revenants from a food processing company that produces uh, juice. Okay. Yes. So what we have there are pills. Okay, that pills. will be used. Yes. Fruit pills, huh? Yes. These okay. are, these are, that will be used in the composting process. Okay. So this is what is left after the separation and drying ah, is done. Ah. And then here, what happens? So okay. this is used to form the wind rows together with the market waste. When I'm, I did indicate that this market waste are vegetable yes. and fruit waste yes. that we collect from the market. Yes. So they are co-composted with this. How okay. do you determine the proportions? It's all dependent on the nutrient levels within within the, the, the waste. Okay. Okay. And how much that should be introduced into the compost and we have parameters we must meet and these are from uh, PPRSD. PRSD regulates the production of fertilizer in Ghana okay. and they have parameters in terms of nutrients we should have in the compost or in the biofertilizer. So in feeding you, you know how much or how, uh, how many tons of market waste will produce a certain level of nutrients. Okay. And that is why we say that we test the waste to know their resource potential before we receive them. How do you test it? Do you have a lab here? Yes, we okay. have a lab. At some point in time, we'll go and check we'll out the lab. Check on After the, we left, we we'll check out the lab. I see, I see a water body there over yes. there. What, what is that? So that is the waste water treatment pond. Okay. So the waste water generated from the process uh -huh. is stabilized through these ponds uh -huh. and reintroduced in the uh, composting system. You, you need to water the compost. You need to turn it. And these nutrients are still introduced into the composting system. Okay, let's check it out. Yeah. So this is this water has come from the process. Yes, it has come from the process. Mm. Can anything live in it? They can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so wastewater treatment. Yes. I see the sign over there. Yes. Let's see, it's so all the way up there, down there, yes. through here to end up here. Yes. So they first go there, uh -huh. and uh, we have those dark weeds that feed on organisms within it to, to stabilize it. Mm. Yes. Then we use them to water the compost if okay. we need watering in the composting it's, process. It's, it's truly circular. Yes, truly circular. Nothing is wasted. Nothing is waste wasted. Waste is not wasted. No, no, no not, not <laughs> at all. Waste is a resource that can't be wasted. I see orange. Yes. Juice. Those are oranges over there. Those are oranges over there. Those will be combined with other food market waste uh -huh. to form the windrows. That is the compost. Interesting. Yes. So the colorful batch you see there yes. is quite new. The right one here. Yes, the yeah. decomposition is, is now started. Uh -huh. OK, but when you look at this, you see the colors that you see there are not in here. It means this is approaching maturity. This was once like that. This was once like that. OK. All right. I see sugar cane. <laughs> it looks like sugar cane to me. The no, green those, those are plantain stalks. Oh, it's plantain stalks. Yeah, or banana okay. stalks. Yes. Okay, all right. So it's fruit waste. Yeah, fruit waste, fruit and vegetable waste. Okay. That are combined with a sledge. Uh huh. That is gotten from the digestate. Exactly. To form the compost. Ah. Yes. And this takes about 90 days to mature, and ready for soil application or farm application. So when you're done, do you you bag it, right? Yes, we bag it. Okay. Yes. It'll be interesting to see what the, the, the bag product looks like yeah. at the end. Okay. The bag product. Mm.
And of course, then farmers now can have access to it. Farmers can now have access to it. Okay. It improves the organic matter content of the soil mm -hmm. and increases microbial activity in the soil. Okay. Where is this? So this is where we store the compost or the biofertilizer mm -hmm. after production. Okay. So this, this is the final stage? Yes, this is the final stage. Okay. Really waste the resource. Let's see. Ah, yes, sir. Premium organic fertilizer, 30 yes. k Asasi Jifu. Asasi Jifu. What does that mean? It the... means the savior of the ah, soil. Ah, G, Jimmy, save yes. me. So the savior yes. of the soil. Yes. And this is, so inside this, you have your, your waste, your market yes, waste. We have them. Your sludge, everything. De everything decomposed uh -huh. and stabilized in a fertilizer form. Awesome. This is great. And then you have all the, 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 the breakdown. Yes. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, organic carbon, organic matter, calcium, magnesium, sulfur. Yeah. Those are the macronutrients. Meaning what? You have them in greater in, proportions? In proportions, yes. And the micro ones. You have zinc, zinc. iron, boron, manganese. My organic fertilizer supports beneficial microorganisms and nutrients in soils, growing media, and plants. Hmm. So, on average, from the time the waste, various waste products enter here to here, what's the, what's the length of the cycle like? So, that takes about... 115 days okay. for okay. us to get a full usable biofertilizer. From crane crane to crane crane. From crane crane to crane crane. Almost, almost four months. Almost four months. Okay. Okay. So what is he doing? He's going to show us what it looks like, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. We'd like to see. Hmm. Do the farmers know where, where the, the, the fertilizer comes from? This is, this is yes, great. Yes, they know. Yeah. It's awesome. Asasi Jufu, yeah. savior of the land. Yes. Okay. So where we have depletions, soil depletions due to galamse, uh -huh. this can be used to reclaim oh. the soil mm. and make it Let me see. V more vitalized for ah. plant growth. Mm. You can't smell any poops no, in no, there. No, 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 no. You can't smell poops in there. So it's human waste, food waste. Food waste. Um, uh, market waste. Market waste, industrial waste. Industrial waste. Yeah. Taken through the process. Taken through the process. It's now a resource. It's now a resource. Awesome. Well done. It increases your yield by a minimum of 20% to 99%. So if you grew one ton without as a CGFO and you now use as a CGFO, you should be getting close to 1.2 to 2 tons. Awesome. More revenue at premium prices on the market yes. because organically grown products are perceived to be of a certain quality exactly. and are bought at a certain price Higher above price. those that are chemically grown. Indeed. And our environment is smiling. And our environment is smiling. Awesome. What's inside this greenhouse like structure? Okay. Let's go there. Okay. How do we go there? Yeah. Let's see this. Oh, Safizana, all is well. All is well. Okay. So basically, small storage of the yes, fertilizer. Small storage of the fertilizer. Okay. Is this, is this the, the, the raw material that came in and the recordings of the weight? So this is how much you produce okay. per hour. Oh, okay. 89, 32, what? Yes. Tons? 32 bags. Bags, okay. And each, bags, each bag is 32 kg. Yeah, yeah. So that's a lot of bags. Yes. Okay. Great. Is this a greenhouse? Yes, this is a greenhouse. Okay. And this is where we test the efficacy of the final product. Oh. Yes. Though we take samples for laboratory tests, yes. those are lab tests. Okay. The empirical one is what we do here. They say we shouldn't step on this. What is inside here? So this is uh, wastewater collected for reuse. Okay. So this is lettuce. Uh -huh. ah. That is grown with asasi jifu. jifu. It's, been it's, it's, been, it's been used yes. on it. Okay. See the green and thick nature mm. of it. The salads will be nice. Very, very. 
Okay. The SACG foam increases the shelf life uh -huh. for a minimum one week. Awesome. So this tells you it has the tendency to reduce post-harvest losses. Exactly so. Chemically grown ones start deteriorating after a day or two without big, treatment. Big difference. Yes. Okay. So various plants are being Yeah, so this is cucumber. Inside. Okay. We just have a study. Okay, cucumber? Yeah, okay. Cucumber. Good stuff. Yeah. What do you like about this job? Wow. <laughs> What I like about it is that for every gram of poop mm -hmm. I flash away, <laughs> I lose about nine watts uh -huh. of electricity. Really? Okay? Yes. <laughs> if we say that the only way to, have, to make economic gains as a nation is to, is to industrialize. Industry is based on energy. It's powered by energy. You can imagine the quantum of energy required to power a certain level of industrialization. Mm -hmm. If poops or toilet can help produce that, why go and mine? Let's and just poop our way, our way to development. Put, yes, poop our way to development. <laughs> why go and mine? Why do you depend on fossil? I like the argument. Which is more expensive. <laughs> and we do it naturally. Nobody has to tell us to go to the, to the bathroom. Yes. We just go. Which is more, and which, then you mine it and then we are done. Mine. Yes. Which is more expensive. <laughs> okay. Fossil is more expensive. All right. <laughs> I like that de development paradigm. And has environmental cost. Exactly so. Attached to it. Indeed. Okay. Is there anything else you want us to see that we haven't seen yet? Yes. How we determine the potential of the waste that come in, mm -hmm. in terms of its safety, okay. and how much resource it can produce, is done with, in the lab. Can we go in? Yes, you can go in. Okay. okay. So we are in the lab here at Safizana. Um, Simone J. Sechi, uh, tell us your job description, what you do, and then, I mean, your title, and then what you do. Okay, so I'm Simone J. Sechi. I'm in charge of safety, health, environment, and quality for Safizana Gun Limited. So what I do is I ensure safety on site as well as um, our activities also impact positively to the environment. So with all environmental reportings, um, the person in charge for that, as well as quality of our raw materials to finish product. Okay. I'm, I'm curious though, uh, for the waste to energy part of your operations, there's a lab coming at any yeah. point. Show me yeah. how important so, the lab is. So it starts from the raw material. Mm -hmm. So before then, any new waste source that comes into the facility or before we even accept, we pick samples, run the test in the lab, we check the dry matter, organic matter, mm -hmm. and also the pH. So the organic matter indicates or tells you the material can break down. Which machine are you using to test So that? we have the um, finance, which is just here. Okay. This is the furnace. Okay. So we use that to check the organic matter. Is it heat? Yeah, it's heat. It's okay. actually a furnace. So we heat it at a temperature of 55, 550 degrees. <laughs> That's too 550. So all it right. burns all the organics to ash. Mm. So ideally, if it's organic, it should burn to ash. Yes. But if it doesn't burn to ash, then that means when you put it in the digester, it's going to form biomass, then it's going to reduce the volume of the digester. I get you. This is the dry oven. Mm -hmm. So we use that to take the moisture out. Normally, the temperature we use is 105. Okay. Um, we know water boils at 100 degrees. So anything above 100, yeah. you take all the water out. So yeah. what we try to, when we take the water out, we're able to know the dry content of the material. Mm, right. And that also gives us an indication of how much gas it can give. Now, the equipment we use to take, test the gas quality of the machine of the material is this equipment What's known it called? as the BMP equipment biomethane potential okay and it's a mini digester currently we are trying to run a test mm -hmm. using um, sugar solution to test whether there's any leakages mm. in the digester so what happens is we pick an inoculum from the digester we we add a substrate that is the material that we want to test mm -hmm. the new resource we put it into it, and after um, 30, 21 days, we're able to get the gas. So what happens is the gas is produced in this digester. It's connected to these tubes. Mm -hmm. 
which the gas moves through the tubes, it goes through a scrubber, mm -hmm. which then produces bubbles. But the gas, normally, if you want to measure methane gas, you put in sodium hydroxide. But if we want to measure biogas, we just put in water. Okay. So everything moves in, including the other gases. But if we are looking at producing only methane, the sodium hydroxide is able to trap the other gas like H2S, um, carbon dioxide, but only the methane gas moves through it. Mm. And this is a counter. So what happens is in this counter, any if it's, a, um, it's the gas coming through is, a, is about five mils, it gives a, a, a beep. So it moves and it then comes onto the display. It reads on this display on here. This, yeah. And it's actually connected to our email. So it sends the final results oh, wow. to our email. So after the 21 to 30 days, you get the results. Then you extract it. We have a software which we use to okay. do the analysis to see how much gas it can give. A lot of tech. Yeah, but this actually takes 21 to 30 days. days. But we have, in the lab, designed our own system, which we use in making the system quite faster. So for us to be able to get a quick response or a quick reaction, we come out with this semi-digester here. Mm -hmm. We have the inoculum, which you subject the sample into it. So within a day, it's done. If you get the gas, so you can just open a brown. So it starts, it starts for producing bubbles. So okay. as soon as you see the bubbles coming out, it's an indication that there's gas, gas. production. Okay. So that means the material can actually produce gas for you. All right. Basically, that is what we do. Okay. So Before we go, the, please open the fridge for me. I don't want to drink water. I just want to see so what's we inside. Have samples <laughs> in. So what's so, inside here? Um, it's also part of our quality control. So as we're also giving them the sample, mm -hmm. um, the recipe to feed, mm -hmm. we also pick samples of what is being fed. So we try to... So if you look at this, the mix pit. So this is what was mixed in the in the mix pit. Yes. So we pick samples of that. Okay. It also has the dates on it. So we try to compare to see with what we give to them if the dry matter is similar to what has been fed. So we cross check what is being fed. We also pick because we're also treating fecal. We also pick samples of all the fecal that we receive. This is poop in the fridge. Yeah. So we put it in, mm. we check the pH, the EC. And also the dry matter, if we identify an issue with the fecal, mm -hmm. then we also advise the community or the area where we are picking from. Sometimes most of them sometimes put in a lot of detergents, which actually increases mm. the EC, the salt content in the okay. material. And in that case, it also destabilizes the digester. So in that, in that case, we try to also educate the clients on that. Why does the stuff have to be in the fridge? Yeah, well, we want to keep it in a controlled environment mm -hmm. and also keep the parameters constant. Okay. Um, because of um, our plan, we're also trying to um, save cost, not running, let's say, for the oven. You just put one sample in and run it and you are going to waste. So what we try to do is for drying and other stuff, we normally do that um, every three days. So we keep them in three days, you have enough samples. Okay. So you just put like, let's say 20 samples in. Not that you put one sample in and you are, yeah. for the duration in the oven too, you take about 18 hours. And 18 hours, you are going to put only one sample in. It's not efficient. Like, yeah, so it's not efficient. So we try to also save cost. All right, Simon, I mean, uh, it's, this is really the, the nerve center of all the operations. And uh, I really want to thank you. Is there anything else you want to say that, uh, it's important. We are really interested in the waste to yeah. energy compo yeah, component so, of um, things. Yeah, so as I earlier said as well, um, we are also in charge of ensuring the environment is clean. Yeah. So with our effluents going, um, that we produce, we also have an internal lab, which we also run analysis on the effluents. Mm. So the equipment there is what we use. And then we are also welcoming clients who want their effluent to be tested. This lab is actually... Um, certified, we have been trained by Waternet mm -hmm. yeah, and a company from the Netherlands, which actually, when we say Waternet, it's like um, Ghana Water of mm -hmm. the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. So they trained and also set up this facility, okay. which we have good equipment that we can run analysis for any external personnel. So. Simon, I thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, yes, You're welcome. keep doing your analysis. Thank you. Yes, and make the place run well. Okay, Eli Klim, I really enjoyed this tour of Safizana. All indeed is well. I've seen how you've, you're turning waste to a resource, be it electricity or fertilizer. 
what's the way forward? I mean, what do you, where do you see waste to resource in Ghana in the next 10 years? So the discussion on circular economy is gaining traction. Policies are being formulated by government to advance circular economic models. It is our desire to scale up this one into other areas beyond Ashima. We are currently in Kumasi and we want to explore Tamale and other areas within the Western, Western Enclave. The more we scale, the larger the impact we make. Impact in terms of waste evacuation and less exposure of people to waste, in terms of uh, carbon mitigation and also reduction in sanitation related diseases. The numbers we are generating now, we impact about 81,000 people. On our scale up plan, when the plant in Kumasi becomes fully operational, we will be impacting about 121,000 people. Our aim is to impact a million lives, over a million lives, and that culminates into a certain number of plants. And so far as policies are in place, are shaped to, to give circular economy models conducive environment to grow, we shall achieve our aim. Thank you very much, Kafui. Thank you so much. We appreciate your coming, and we hope this is a lesson to all. For every gram of toilet you flash away, that's about nine watts of electricity flashed away. Let's conserve more by reusing waste to produce the very useful products we need in our daily lives. Thank you very much. All is well indeed. All is really well. Safi Sana, Ghana Limited, <laughs> German manager, Elik Plim Asilevi, taking us around this plant as part of our hashtag climate talks conversation, which is a collaboration between the German embassy in Ghana and the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. My name is Kafui Day. Thank you for watching.